when I say, who's the master? You say, no, no. What is up, guys? Shun up the King here, back with another video. I gotta say, whoo, this is the first kink in the armor of Trigger in A1 when it comes to Darwin and the Franks. Like, I saw the preview for this episode yesterday, and I was super excited from the preview that I saw. And what I actually got in the episode was just frustration, confusion, and just what the fuck. Like, I, let me be clear. I don't. I didn't hate the episode. I just did not like the direction and what they decided to do with the story. So let me explain. Like as you can see, I got a, I got a, I got a bunch of lists. I got a list here. So I got a. There was so much just randomness that happened this episode that I have to just refer to my notes because I can't remember everything. And speaking of that, let me let me talk about that a little bit so I can just kind of let you guys know what my frustration is with this actual episode. Darling and Franks has been thus far one of the greatest, you know, new animes that I've watched in a long time. Story-wise, especially when it was not directed to be something I thought it was going to be. And it, when saying that, I mean, when this show started, I thought it was going to be like a uh, borderline Ichi mech anime with lots of fighting and action elements and just you know, cool boy, girl parents, and, you know, stuff like that. What I got was actually so much more, and it was just much more in-depth. It was actually had a lot more soul than I thought it was going to be, was going to have. So, and I accepted that. So, the fact that this show actually only has about 20 to 30 percent actual action, you know, for a show to still be this good is a testament to Trigger and A1's, you know, storytelling. Now, with that being said, one of the major issues that I actually have with this episode is the actual story telling itself. So the fact that, you know, 20 episodes in, you guys decide to not only do the the typical trigger switcheroo, and again, to be and to be honest, most people saw this coming anyway. Like, I don't I, let I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So first things first, a couple of things that I did get right in my predictions for us couple of videos back, you guys can also check those out. Uh, uh, the giant mech that uh, that uh, the Kalaxosaur Princess and Hero are currently piloting, I called that out at the start of the season, and I, and I showed that. In the, if you see in the background, you see that giant Frank in the background. I'm the one that called that out and said that that's going to be the mech that the Kalaxosaur Princess is going to use. And, of course, I got that spot on. Uh, also, um, in one of my videos, I had said that if that was zero two, then that was also um, the first uh, Klaxosaur Princess was zero one, and Doctor Frank's confirmed that that was zero one. And again, I'm not saying that I was the first person that came out and said that. I'm just saying I was in some of my videos even titled that that was zero one, and that ends up being right. So one thing that I was um, I was off a bit on was uh, Herringhorn. So apparently Herringhorn is not a Frank's. Herringhorn is a Frank weapon. It is actually a giant spear created from the cores of Kalaxosaurs that uh, Papa has been, cre been collecting and building this entire time. And speaking of Papa, apparently Papa is actually Vrim, and Vrim is like intergalactic aliens. I, again, I don't. I don't even know. Like, it's just so. The key, the recipe to a great story is to feed us breadcrumbs so you can keep the integrity of the show while maintaining some sort of surprise. I get that, but you ruin the surprise when you reveal it along with like fifty other things that are just. It just feels like that you're at the end of the series and you have to get all this out there. So you decide to throw it all in a 17-minute episode. So that is what's frustrating me. I felt like all these reveals we got this one episode could have been sparsed out in the previous episodes. I mean, hell, we got two breaks in this anime 
for interviews and stuff. They could have used that time and just increased the show by two episodes. And then when those breaks were happening, just give us flashbacks. It, it's, it's just weird. Like, I don't understand what happened. But that being said, let's actually get to the. And again, this is not even going to be much of a review. This is going to be more of a discussion, just trying to, as a collective group, we just try to figure out what the hell is going on in this great show. So, first things first, let's get the small things out of the way. Kokoro is pregnant. Uh, you know, she is uh, having morning sickness. She's been throwing up the past couple of days, so she is with a child. Um, they're getting ready to go out on their final mission to to the Great Crevasse to finally defeat the Calaxosaur Princess. And uh, Papa and them are just, you know, leading the way. So that's kind of what, what's going on with that. Dr. Franks. So, again, here, 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 here's the thing. So, apparently, Vrim is an intergalactic enemy, and they split from the original Homo sapiens or the Calaxosaur sapiens. So, apparently, the uh, Calaxosaurs have always been underground, and they were protecting the Earth. So, it's official that the Calaxosaurs are the good guys and that Papa and Vrim are the bad guys. And the reason why that, and normally that would have been a great reveal, but the reason why I was so frustrated by it is because the way they execute the actual switch. So we get Hero and we get Zero Two. They're down in the Grand, the Grand Crawfoss to start up the, the new weapon, which is basically called, what is it? Uh, Star Entity. That's the name of the giant, um, the giant Frank. Uh, and apparently, Star Entity was created by uh, Doctor Frank's and the Calaxosaur Princess because she's calling it her child. Now, is she calling it her child because it's made from Calaxosaurs, or did Doctor Frank's create Star Entity on its own? Again, that's not been made clear. So again, it's very frustrating, is what I'm saying. So it almost looks like Doctor Frank. Because again, it goes back and it's like. So what was Dr. Franks' entire point of raising the kids? I understand why they had, you know, reproductive organs so that they could pilot the Franks, but what was the purpose of them living differently or living separate lives and just rebelling? Like, what was the purpose of that if your end goal was to pilot the star entity with the Calaxosaur princess because you thought she couldn't pilot it on her own? That was your grand, that was your grand plan? Like, and again, did you know about Vrim? Did you know that they were alien invaders and not the the saviors of humanity? And the fact that the other members of Vrim didn't even realize that the other two guys were actual aliens. That was another thing that just didn't make sense. So it's just like, so I, I can, you can get me there with saying that Papa was pulling a fast one on Dr. Franks. Like, Dr. Franks didn't know that Papa was an alien. But the fact that all the members of Papa and, you know, of, of that group didn't know that two members were actual energy-laced aliens. Now, if they, because again, when they turn into the alien form, which you'll see in the thumbnail, uh, the others look surprised. Like, they was like, whoa, what is this? So, again, after an episode like that, we should not have that many questions that we know we're not going to get full answers to because we only have a few episodes left. So, it's, again, I, I think from that perspective, it's very bad storytelling on um, Studio Trigger and uh, A1's part. I, I definitely did not like how they executed this whole reveal. Like, it, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I felt confused and I felt almost like and again I, I want to say confused like I'm following what they're doing so I'm not when I say confused I don't mean like I don't get it I get what they were trying to go I just don't understand why they did it that way and the way that they executed that story is confusing to to most people like the fact that I had to watch this episode two or three times just to try to understand all the little nuances that were going on it shouldn't it shouldn't be that difficult it shouldn't um Oh, another another small thing. Uh, why is Zero Two's blood red? Anybody else notice that? Like, I'm, I'm 
it, it, it's not it, it's a little bit of a nitpick, but at the same time, the fact that she spent most of this episode after getting knocked out of the pilot box, just dragging herself along the box just to get back to Hero, and her blood was red this entire in that entire time. But earlier in the series, we clearly showed that her blood was purple. I'm, I'm sorry, blue. That's the whole reason why when she you know shared her her blood when Hero licked her wound and kind of integrated his DNA with hers. So, you know, why is her blood red now? Like, that's weird. I, and again, if one of you guys know and I might be missing something, let me know in the comment section below. But as far as I was concerned, I thought her blood was supposed to be purple. I mean, purplish blue or whatever. Um, in general, uh, so... So we find out also that Dr. Franks created the collect the, the 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 Franks themselves are all collapsosaurs. They all derive from collapsosaurs, and we find out as well that the pilots, the kids themselves, you know, Squad Thirteen, have basically been fighting other pilots. So apparently, inside of all those collapsosaurs are also uh, pilots, like just like them, but they're piloting collapsosaurs. And apparently they've been fighting over the magma. And again, I did say this in one of my videos that, and, and again, which is why it didn't make sense to me that this surprise that happened with the term making it look like the Collapsosaur Princess is now the good guy wasn't that far-fetched to me. Because again, you could see it from both sides. Like you're, you're having these people that's mining this magma and it's causing the earth to die. So then all of a sudden, these monsters come out from under the ground to try to stop you. And of course, from their pers from Papa and Verim's perspective, they look at it like, oh, these guys are just trying to destroy the Earth. And they're just trying to take what's, what's naturally ours. We should be able to share it. And in actuality, it's basically it was a Calaxis or Princess trying to stop them from actually taking the magma. So... And again, the, the 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 thought process behind that is that that's why, you know, they're the bad guys because they're taking this magma and, you know, it's supposed to be for the earth, you're killing the earth. Now, the other issue that I have, though, is if you go back and you watch this series from the beginning, there are clear decisions that were made that just don't make sense in light of what we just learned. It's just like, why is it that Dr. Franks is working with Vrem in relation to destroying the world, essentially, because if you look at it, when Star Entity comes out of the ground and is being piloted by Hero and the Collectible Princess, well, Zero One, the defenses of the Earth start coming out of the ground. Like, literally, the Earth turns into an entire defense force. It has, like, these giant laser guns and these giant pods that are shooting into the earth that and again the other thing that just blew my mind i'm just like what apparently vrim had been occupying the space this entire time in cloak mode for all these years and then was just right there to invade earth and to destroy the second that they needed to now again this could have been a situation where maybe they hadn't been there this entire time maybe when papa and vrim knew that they were going to do this mission they were there on standby. So that's a possibility. But again, when you don't give us this details and you kind of like throw it in there really, really quickly, you leave yourself open to these kind of criticisms. So again, it was just not executed. It was not executed well at all, in my opinion. Now, I'm trying to piece this all together because, again, it is just so, so, so confusing. There's so much information. Like, I. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, Kokoro and Mitsuru, they also are starting to get their memories back. So, with Kokoro, with Mitsuru mentioning Kokoro's name, it starts to bring back his memories of her, which starts to let their uh, their piloting skills default, you know, falter. And you know, they're in the, pro the process of getting attacked. But luckily. The Collapsosaur Princess decides to start talking into the minds of everybody and start giving them the 411 on everything that's been going on. So basically, in the span of like five minutes, she decided to give a huge exposition dump and just literally explain to the viewers on what's actually going on and why they're the good guys and why they're the bad guys. 
And to that I say, why didn't you do that earlier? Because it looks like she's the one that was also controlling all those Kalaxosaurs this entire time. So if you felt like, because we already know what's going to happen. The Kalaxosaur princess and the hero are going to team up together to go against Brim. We know that. So my question to them is, why didn't she just do that earlier? Based on the information you just provided us, why didn't you guys do that earlier? Why didn't she just directly talk into the brain stem of all the pilots and then mind the papa and just say, hey, Grim is who they who you think they are. These are the bad guys. You know, I'm here just to save the earth. You guys are playing on the wrong team, like something. But again, in doing that, that would have gotten rid of the surprise. So they just decided to just leave those details out. And again, a good story can still get those points across and get that logic across and it's still preserve secrets that will still shock the audience and get us to be like, oh my God, that is so shocking. I didn't see that coming. Think about Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is very, very good at shock value, at keeping surprises, but making it organic. You find out these things organically. Prime example, the whole Hodor thing from Game of Thrones. If you guys are not familiar with Game of Thrones, this might be a minor spoiler alert for Game of Thrones. So, Throughout the course of the series, there was this big guy with this brain issues and he couldn't talk at all. All he could say is Hodor. And people thought that that was his name. They thought his name was Hodor, so they called him Hodor. So season one, Hodor. Season two, season three. All the way up to, I don't even know what season we're on right now, but all the way up towards the end, we find out in a great flashback that his name isn't Hodor and that he's actually just screaming out, hold the door, hold the door. And it's a great callback to what we learned at the very beginning throughout the series. And it is a fantastic reveal. And no one saw this coming. It was a shock. It was a great shock because, again, they built it up. They developed that story. And we got the great payoff. But we didn't feel like it just gave us an exposition dump and just farted on us all at one time and just gave us everything at one time. They gradually gave you clues and breadcrumbs, and then once the reveal happened, it made sense. It made perfect sense. We didn't get that with Darling and Frank. We didn't. And again, unfortunately, that just leads to way more questions than I thought I would have at episode 20, when we only have less than five episodes left, maybe three or four episodes left. So, you know, overall... I enjoyed watching the episode. I enjoyed where the story went thus far. I just did not like the execution of how they decided to drop these story details and do this big reveal that Brim is the the bad guys and that, you know, um, the Classosaur Princess is the good person with her whole defense weapons coming out of the ground. I I just, I wasn't feeling that. So let me know what you guys think. You know, it's time for the discussion. And again, if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, hit bell notifications. I'm going to need your help, guys, because literally, like, I'm confused. I'm going to have to watch this episode again once I'm done with this review just to try to piece some things together. I hope I didn't miss out on anything important. Uh, If I did, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys thought of the episode. And again, let me just say this. Like, I'm not saying that I hate the series now. I'm just saying in a long line of great episodes of Darling and the Franks, this was a definite bump in the road for me. Uh, But again, let me know what you guys think. Shun of the King. Have an awesome day.